All right, so I'm Laura Klein, and I teach English. And Todd told me he wanted me to talk about YouTube, and I was like, why? Um, and then <laughs> I thought about some of the things that Todd was saying. And I use YouTube a lot. And YouTube is one of those things that you could go to your office after I stop talking, and you could be using it and putting content in your classes in five minutes. I mean, pretty easily. So that's the benefit of YouTube. I just have to say, before I start here, that I'm really embarrassed by my YouTube name. And you're all going to see it eventually. So <laughs> I'll just bring it up right now. I've had it since college, and you can't change change your username on YouTube, so I would lose, I would have to transfer all my content, but it's embarrassing. What okay, it? it's Rockstar1981. <laughs> um, and I just, you know, I made a new account today to make sure it was really as fast as I thought it was, and it is. Um, <laughs> so how many people do use YouTube now to make content for your class? Okay. How many use it to watch content, like hamster on a piano? <laughs> OK. So using it to make content is pretty much as easy as using it to watch content. You have to create an account. And you can see on the handout there, it takes four steps. Um, you log in. If you already have a Google account, they're connected. So it's really fast. And then you have just a really easy interface. And I'll, you know, I have a webcam hooked up here. You can get one free from TELUS if you don't have a webcam. And all you do is you hit Upload, Record from Webcam. And if it works, I'll be there in a second talking. And the most, and you hit Record. And it'll come up, and you can embed it in your class, and it takes no time at all. Um, the most important thing I've learned about YouTube is not to make horrible faces before you start recording or as you start recording. Because <laughs> when I first started using it, it was like my announcement page on Blackboard was just me being like, like in a million videos. It's terrible. So um, <laughs> you can. I didn't mean to close that. You cannot edit it. So the thing about YouTube is that it's really fast, and it doesn't have the hoops you have to jump through to do something like record a Camtasia video and edit it and do all of that. It's really fast, and I use it for content as I need it. I teach English. So when I'm teaching something like English 102 online, which in person is a discussion class. If we were all in person, we would read something. We would come in, and we would talk about it. So moving that online is really different. And a lot of time, I feel like I'm teaching the students individually. right? I'm interacting with their papers, and I'm teaching them to what they need. And I'll see things come up as I'm teaching and think, wow, none of my students know how to write a thesis statement. I'm just going to make a video really quick that addresses the specific issues I'm seeing right now in their writing. And I don't want to take hours to do it on Camtasia and make a PowerPoint and do all that. I just want to say, hey, you know, you need to work on this, and this is what it is. And that's basically what I use YouTube for. I also use it for announcements. I like to interact with my online students. I like to see their faces, and I like them to see my face. Um, and this is really easy for that. So right there, there's a thesis statement video. And that's actually what's up on the TELS web letter, where I'm just addressing, in a specific paper, Students were having these specific issues with their thesis statements. It's pretty low budget. I'm holding up signs <laughs> with examples on it. But it's right there, and it's in their announcement window, and they'll, they'll watch it. You know, if I wrote that all out in a document and put it up there, they wouldn't read it. And I know that. And so I, I try to be funny, and I put it on the video. But mo I also use them. This, my students make YouTube videos as well. Does anybody else have their students make YouTube videos? OK. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the things. I'll show you what they look in my Blackboard course. But I made a little playlist of stuff I like for today, which is stuff of mine and then also stuff of my students. I'll play mine first. So you can, um, I actually made this for EDU 255. Um, so I'm talking about my blog. But I do a similar thing for my classes. So you can see just, you know, this is me. I think online classes can feel really impersonal sometimes. And I've taken online classes where the content was good. I learned a lot from it. But I felt like I was, you know, just logging in and doing it on the computer. And so I try to fix that. This is when I first started making them. So I'm smiling a lot. And my eyes are really wide. But so you, can <laughs> see, <laughs> you can see what's going on here. So this is my intro video. Oh, no.
But, and I made this using another product and then uploaded it into YouTube and YouTube is a really good place to upload lots of stuff too but you can also make it just in YouTube the music is open source so that's one of the things yes Todd I would just like to say that so, so I don't know if you were clear on this for sure but that's how she introduces herself to her online students now I gotta tell you and I have slides of, of several faculty web pages with pictures blurred out and everything blurred out that, that I've used for several years in a presentation I do called Your Digital Personality. And because in our TELS group we are asked to go look in your courses sometimes and figure things out, what I see very frequently is like two paragraphs of text. It says I've worked here for seven years and I went to ASU. <laughs> and I have a dog named Bill, you know? Um, and that's all that the online student knows about you. That's it. That's all they get. It's they never see. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm telling you that 90% of the courses are like that. You know? This, at least it tells us some other things. It, it has the, some emotional element to it that I think is, is much missing in the online environment. So, um, anyway, whether it's your face talking or a video like that, just saying, hello, this is me, does a huge amount of stuff to a, a student at 11 o'clock at night staring into an empty screen, at least they know who they're talking to. You know, Blackboard lets you put up a little picture that's this big, you know, in your, so anyway. So you're saying we can put a YouTube set up in that part and instructor in Blackboard. You, we can put a link to your YouTube, create something like that. Yeah, it's hyperlink. Anyway, she's going to show you probably. Uh, how, yeah, tell how us how you got that little, you said you used sure. another program? Oh, well, that I made in another program, and it is a little bit more complicated. I was going to show you a student here that's much more low-tech. Um, but you could make, you know, just your, uh, that I made in, like, my Mac movie maker and then I put it was still pretty easy but then I put I uploaded it onto YouTube you can just make your face and then after you upload the videos when you have your whole videos you just embed it like you would embed any content video if you wanted to put somebody else's video you know you just click share and you get either a link or you can embed it and this gets even simpler all the time YouTube has made this into like the easiest thing um, to embed these videos that there is. My students also have to make them, so um, they're public domain, you know, and yeah. I'm sorry, can I ask you a quick, before you move totally. away from your own, um, I'm wondering about the music that you play, because I have put YouTube videos up and I get this thing that tells me that I might be in trouble with BMI records or... Yeah, that's not copyrighted music. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got it from Creative Commons. So you, yeah, so you, it's, it's open access music. Yes, okay. it's open access. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, I ask my students to buy webcams. Um, I let them do other things if they really don't want to. 
but I address those as they come up. I don't say, you know, you can opt out if you want. I say you can't, and then when they ask me, I'm like, okay, you can do this. I let them make different types of videos, like Animoto videos, things like that, that they can make without a webcam and that don't show their face. Um, my class, uh, we don't have a lot of textbooks. I use paperbacks and web materials, so I sort of sell it as, you're, I save you a bunch of money on books. We don't have a textbook. Buy a 1999 webcam, um, and usually it's okay. Can I, yeah. You know, I, and I do the same thing, and I just let you know up front that you'll need access to a web camera throughout the course, mm -hmm. and then it's just part of their supplies that they need. And I said, if you don't have access, I do recommend, you know, if they can come on campus, there's places like the TALS office where you can utilize an our media studio or something like that. Or, um, let's see, or I also state that I do in-person oral presentations, since that's my area, and they can come on campus and do a, provide an like, oral presentation. But mm -hmm. There's some options, but yeah, you don't let them get away with it. Yeah, so they do other things. Um, sometimes I let them make like a PowerPoint and embed that instead. So they'll do a personal PowerPoint and put it through so SlideShare or one of the other online. Basically, I use these. I'll just show you what they look like in my class. They get a, embedded in announcements, and here is me, you know, explaining an upcoming assignment. You can see what I mean about making faces. Um, here's one about thesis statements. This is a mini lecture. But uh, sometimes after spring break updates, just what we're going to do this week, type announcements. And I put those up. And sometimes I write too, but I like to switch back and forth because, again, it puts that personal, you know, um, this is me talking to you and this is casual. This is just, you know, this is what we're doing this week. And that's what I really like it for. At first, I really didn't like it because I think it's hard to put your face on the course. I think there is sort of an obstacle to overcome there, and it's not really to be underestimated. I mean, it is weird. And <laughs> seeing yourself, I don't like to watch my own. Like, I get really embarrassed. You can probably see my face. I like have to walk to the other side of the room. I don't like to watch my own videos, even though I know that my in-person students, I'm standing up there in front of them making the same faces, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and they get to see me in the same lovely office backdrop all the time with some book boxes back there. But it works pretty well. Um, my students make videos as well, like I said. I'll show you one of those. And they introduce themselves using them, and then they have options throughout the semester. They can do a certain number of their responses to the reading as video responses. I figure if we were in class, they would be responding to the reading verbally all the time. Um, and they don't really get that opportunity in an online environment. So I give them a chance to do that. Yeah, Jenny? Are they introducing themselves to you or to the whole class? To the whole class. So are they on, These are they go on their blogs. They have blogs, personal blogs for the class. And they post this as their first blog post. There's a, um, there's a, we have a wiki that's a blog role that I encourage them to look at each other's blogs. And they often do because they learn it's a good way to figure out if you have no idea how to do the assignment, to look at somebody who's already done it and see <laughs> what they did. Um, and so that's how they do it. Okay. Because that's one complaint, I'm sorry, but I have a Blackboard. I'd like to put up everyone's little video somewhere where we can just yes. go around and click. Can we do that yet? You can make a tab to do that. It'd be awkward. <laughs> Um, but I've done that in the past with content with blogs. Yeah, I mean, the internet is hyperlinks. So it's just, it, it's a link. It's HTTP blah, 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 you know? So you could literally make a list of Bill's name, underline it, link it to that video. So when the user gets there, they see Bill's name, they click on it, and they're watching Bill. Or in Blackboard, you could embed it like she did hers in her announcements. Or in the new Blackboard, you, you can actually use the mashup tool. So you could just put those, you know, stacked in, in a list, one on top of the other. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's all just links. And there's also sort of a social networking aspect to YouTube. Um, you have, you can have your own channel. So everybody, ha when you sign up for an account, you automatically have your own channel, and you can do things with it. And you can, you know, I haven't done much with mine, including change my uh, username. But <laughs> it's 
all of your videos will go there and your students could, like an RSS feed, subscribe to your channel. And one of the really great things about YouTube is that it's enabled on pretty much every mobile device that exists. Um, you can watch it on your iPhone or your iPad, even if you have a smartphone. I have a really cruddy smartphone that I hate and never accesses the internet, but I can still watch YouTube videos on it <laughs> really easily. Um, so, you know, they could get these announcements if they subscribe to your channel on their phone. And they might watch them <laughs> when it comes up on their phone. And that's part of what's so attractive about this, I think. And then all of the videos are there. And you can also favorite them. So some of these are um, my students' videos that I've put as my favorites so that if they go to my channel, they could look at their classmates' videos and be like, oh, that is pretty cool that Jacob made his own video about the things they carried with all of these animations and stuff. How could I do that? So. One more. Uh, YouTube lets you organize your stuff. It, it, it allows you to create like a playlist so you can have my family. And in that playlist would be all your kids or your whatever. Uh, you can add videos to a playlist called the smartest things ever said in the world. You can make that up. You could be surfing the internet. You could see Larry Froelich's video where he explains the meaning of life. You could click Add to Playlist, and that playlist could be embedded in Blackboard. It could be embedded on a Kelly's website or any place. And so anybody who goes to wherever that playlist is embedded constantly sees what you're adding to it. You know what I mean? But so YouTube isn't just a thing where you watch stuff. It actually, if you have an account, it allows you to organize your stuff just like folders and files. Yeah, I mean, you can see right here I made a playlist for today. So there's the faculty showcase playlist. And this has videos that I made um, from my channel. But these two right here are my students' videos. So I just added them to the playlist from the links that I have of theirs. But you could make them, like these are all the updates videos. I'm not that organized, but I could be. Um, these are all the updates videos. These are all the lecture videos. These are all my different folders with the videos in them. And they can be your videos and also anybody else's videos who's on YouTube. Anything else? Anything anybody wants to see? So you're doing a session <laughs> uh, at the Institute? I'm doing a session on e-portfolios at the Institute which I mean kind of includes this. This is part of what I'm going to talk about at the Institute is ways to get your students presenting online and to collect their work. A lot of people at the end of the semester will do some sort of portfolio that includes maybe a presentation. And um, I'm going to talk about how to get that online. And YouTube is one of the simplest ways to do student presentations. Um, they can make a video. Some of them that I have have done really funny things where they do like skits and act them out. And there's all kinds of potential for creativity, but with real ease. I mean, it's really easy to use. It's not that scary. You can do it in five minutes. Awesome. Cool. Cool.